CPW can handle, can handle anisotropy quite readily. The application of anisotropy to field problems, however, requires careful thought and selective use. First of all, we, can, we will demonstrate how anisotropy is specified in CPW. Here we have a textbook case where we have anisotropy. The anisotropy in this direction and perpendicular to direction and the anisotropy in the x direction is 10 times the vertical direction. The slope here is an angle of 2 to 1, which is equivalent to 26.57 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to specify in CPW this angle and we need to specify this ratio. Now as a general concept, in CPW, the function, the conductivity function is always the function representing the conductivity in the x direction. So kx from function. KY is always computed as ratio times KX. So to repeat, KX always comes from the function and KY is always computed from KX times the specified ratio. Let's go to GeoStudio then and open up SEP10. And depending on what state you have opened it up, there is only one analysis here at the current time. Going to the key in analysis dialog box, let us rename the first analysis here num number one, and let's call this the homogeneous case. Then we want to analyze a second analysis, and we say clone the first one, and we will call this number two. and isotropic. Under key in materials, we have material number one. Let's rename this material homogeneous. And notice that we have a ratio here of 1, meaning that kx and ky are the same and the direction of the principle kx and ky is 0. In other words, kx is horizontal and ky is vertical. Let us analyze the first case then, homogeneous start and looking at the results view we indeed see what we would anticipate and that our flow lines are perpendicular to our equal potential lines as we would expect for a homogeneous case.
Going back to the define view then, under key in materials, let us clone the first material and call it anisotropic. And this time, we will say that the ratio of KY to KX is 0 0.1. And the direction is 26.57 degrees. The ratio, this means that the vertical or the y direction, sorry, the y direction is one tenth of kx, and kx comes from the function, or in this case, a specified constant. Going to analysis number two, then, we say draw materials, we select the anisotropic material and apply it to the region and reanalyze the problem. Number two, and going to the results view, we now see that we have anisotropic flow. We see that the flow is upstream at first, so to speak, and then it t makes a turn and then flows in this direction toward the exit point. More importantly, we see that now the flow lines are no longer perpendicular to the equal potential lines illustrating that we have an anisotropic case. So specifying anisotropy in CPW is really quite straightforward. However, uh, as we'll see here in just a few moments, making use of anisotropy for field problems, as I've already said, requires some considerable thought and uh, caution in specifying anisotropy. As a general rule, we highly, highly recommend that if you are considering using anisotropy in your seepage analysis, that you should first, without specifying anisotropy, get a very realistic solution. This helps you sort out uh, boundary conditions and making sure that the problem has been set up correctly, that you've obtained a proper converged solution and so forth. Only after you have obtained a very realistic solution for the homogeneous case or a case an, where you do not have anisotropy should you try to start applying anisotropy. And the reason for this is that applying anisotropy without some considerable thought ahead of time can result in some very unreasonable solutions and very, very difficult to interpret. To illustrate the point as to what we mean about the difficulty with anisotropy, notice that in here we have a flow through a simple homogeneous stem. And the flow, as we have seen in our analysis so far, of course, is exactly as we would anticipate. The flow lines come and some, the uh, flow exits in some kind of an under drain here. Now, if you apply 
a 10 times anisotropy to this case, y is 1 tenth of kx, or in other words, kx is 10 times ky, we get this solution here where we have a large downstream seepage phase. I think you would all agree with me that this is not a realistic solution and it's highly unlikely that you would have ever seen this in a real field case. In all likelihood the reason that one would not see this in the field is that even though we measure anisotropy at the lab sample size, at the field size we probably do not see the same anisotropy. Taking a look at this case to illustrate what I mean, if we take this cross-section and we create a series of layers, a large number of layers, but none of these layers are connected in this case, I have made the uh, x conductivity in the layers is ten, is 10 times greater than the y conductivity in the layers. In other words, there's a lot of anisotropy in the layers. And in spite of all of these layers, with the large amount of anisotropy in each of the layers, none of the layers are entirely connected. So, a droplet of water could easily, a droplet of water could pass through the dam without ever hitting any of the layers. And when we do that, we get this picture here, which is not unlike the homogeneous case. The equal potential lines and the flow lines are somewhat jagged and squiggly, but overall the pore pressure distribution is not unlike the homogeneous case. And it is our understanding from persons who have made field measurements that often the pore pressure distribution from piezometric measurements is close to the homogeneous case even though they have clearly demonstrated on laboratory tests that the soil is anisotropic at small scale levels like lab samples. So once again, I would urge you to be very cautious with anisotropy. Going back to the previous slide, we noted here that we have a detailed example that we ship with the software called Anisotropy and Seepage Analyses and the uh, PDF document that goes with the example uh, explains this case in greater detail as to how the analysis was done. The paper is also in this C folder on the CD, the folder called Papers of Interest. So if you are more, want more discussion on how to deal with anisotropy, and how we arrived at this example, I would urge you to read this paper, Anisotropy and Seepage Analysis. To sum up, once again, I would strongly, strongly urge you that if you are contemplating using anisotropy, that you should get a very, very realistic solution without anisotropy, and then apply anisotropy in small increments, perhaps a factor of of difference between x and y of 2, and then maybe a factor of 4, then maybe a factor of 6, and at each stage you should be able to interpret the results. If you make the anisotropy constant contrast too high at first, like for example 100, then it is nearly impossible to interpret the results. So please, please uh, start with the homo homogeneous, or sorry, rather, the non-anisotropic case, and then slowly migrate to the anisotropic case by 
changing the contrast between KY and KX quite slowly.